guys, Perry here, and I have your non-spoiler review for War for the Planet of the Apes. We don't often get a trilogy of films that manage to set the bar high and keep it up there throughout, but holy crap, Matt Reeves, he did it. Director Rupert Wyatt first brought back the Planet of the Apes franchise very, very strong in 2011 with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, but then Reeves stepped in and he just totally crushed it with Dawn in 2014. And now he does it again with War for the Planet of the Apes, which is a riveting story in and of itself. And then it also winds up turning Caesar's three film arc into one of the deepest and most satisfying big screen character journeys, maybe even ever. So we reunite with Caesar and the rest of the apes in war. They're hiding out in the woods. They're desperately trying to steer clear of a very, very savage group of soldiers. Their leader, he's the colonel and he's played by Woody Harrelson. He's specifically targeting Caesar. So one thing leads to another and Caesar winds up in a position where he's just filled with rage and he also needs to figure out how he's gonna keep the others that are just so, so loyal to him safe. One of the most impressive things about this movie is that it works on two levels. Now, obviously I've seen the other two movies, but I do suspect that you can walk into war without having seen Rise or Dawn and you could still get a satisfying and very moving story out of it. But then of course, this is Caesar's three film journey and War does such a beautiful job referencing and respecting what he went through in the last two films, but it does it in a way that isn't really along the lines of, oh, remember when that happened? That's why this is happening. It's more naturally woven into the framework of this immediate situation that the apes are in, and it's done in a way that organically makes you understand Caesar's decision in this moment, and then also in the context of his whole life, which is not really an easy thing to achieve. And war isn't just a great third chapter for Caesar himself. We also spent a lot of time with Maurice and Rocket, who yet again function as wonderful, well-developed supporting characters while also bringing out a lot in Caesar as a main character. And as for those new characters, we have Amaya Miller as Nova and Steve Zahn as a character who is dubbed Bad Ape, and they're just fantastic. Add Miller to this growing list of young stars like Daphne Keene from Logan and Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things who are able to express so much without much dialogue at all, or in Miller's case, really no dialogue. And Bad Ape is hands down one of the most amusing and endearing characters we've gotten maybe all year. Unlike Caesar and the rest of the gang, Bad Ape came from a zoo and he's been living all by himself for quite some time. So he's basically 10 times more bizarre and socially awkward than them. At first, I thought that joke had a chance of growing old pretty fast, but the comedic timing is just so on point and Bad Ape is also pretty smart and capable too. And that combination works really well. War for the Planet of the Apes also wins really big with its villain. Feels like we are often complaining about thinly drawn villains or ones that winds up being not so scary because their story is just explained away. That's not really the case with Woody Harrelson as the Colonel though. He's pure evil and for most of the movie, he has this sort of looming presence that feels dangerous and almost as scary as an indestructible horror slasher. The Colonel does have this one scene that kind of borders on being an exposition dump, but Harrelson's delivery is so good that it works well enough and that information also winds up enhancing that character big time in the third act, so it's well worth it. Another thing that winds up working in Harrelson's favor and also in favor of the success of the movie overall is the fact that he's really the only main human character. There's one other of note that does make an impression, but whereas Dawn also featured Gary Oldman and Jason Clarke and all the humans that stuck close to him, this one is pretty much just Caesar and the Apes versus the Colonel. And this is where that comes into play because then there's more than enough screen time to go around and we end up with main characters who are all extremely well developed. And as we've come to expect from the series, the effects here are freaking through the roof. The apes look as real as any person standing next to you. And another thing I've come to expect from these movies is an incredible score. Michael Giacchino's work on this apes movie might actually be better than his work on Dawn. There are just countless instances where the score enhances a moment of silence, it delivers a really catchy, arousing theme, or it just ups tension and suspense and more. It really is incredible work from him. I'm just really bowled over and thrilled by how well the team behind these movies pulled this all off. 
It's really, really something special to go on a three film journey with a character that's this fantastic. I'm giving the movie a nine out of 10. It's one of my favorite films of 2017 and Caesar is one of my favorite big screen characters, perhaps ever. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. If you're excited for War for the Planet of the Apes or maybe if you've seen it already, Tell me about it in the comment section below. And also, as always, be sure to keep an eye on the Collider Videos YouTube channel because we're going to have a lot more movie reviews coming your way soon.